using the Max 7219 controlled 8x8 LED matrix panels to create scrolling text signs and other graphic displays using ESP8266 with a YouTube subscriber counter and optional text entered over Wi-Fi. The Max 7219 LED driver can control seven segment displays or just rows and columns of a dot matrix display and maybe a few other options as well. And I happen to have one of these displays with four of these panels in one. So I wanted to make a scrolling YouTube subscriber counter with the ability to add custom text as well. And I didn't want to have to keep programming this thing every time I want to change the message so I made it Wi-Fi updatable. It can sit running over Wi-Fi. I don't have to have it plugged into anything except a power source. I can just log into its internal web server page, change the text, and it will update. I found a very similar project that already exists from etechpath.com. I'm linking everything below. So this project is using the 7219 matrix with ESP8266 and Wi-Fi text updatable. So you can look in the links below, but this is close to what I'm doing. So I started from this project. They have their own video showing what they're doing and a link to their code. So you can go check that out if you want. And they are using the library from Magic Designs, MD Max 72XX. Mad Max? So I'm using this as well. You can install this from the Arduino library manager or you can come to GitHub and it comes with lots of examples. I couldn't get all of these to compile. I'm not sure if there's changes since these were done between other Arduino libraries or board files. Sometimes things don't work nicely, but I got a couple of these to work like Pac-Man and this tester, which shows a bunch of fonts and animation features. And there's other libraries and other pages that people have put up showing their demos including people who use just one display and do an animated video game character or something like that. So if you're going to create your own custom font or image, I found a couple of LED matrix editors like this one. What you can do here, you can draw whatever you want and then update and it will give you Arduino friendly code over here where you can create an array that represents this data with whatever LEDs are turned on and off. And you can even make a flip book of images. So if I say insert, and now I've got code here to represent three different eight by eight images. And I can play back these panels. Right now it's got half a second delay between each panel. So I can see what the animation might look like. And there it is, not doing much. So a useful tool if you're going to do your own stuff. But in the meantime, here's what I came up with. And I mentioned here the project I based mine on again is from eTech Path. I took some things out, I added some things in. Primarily what I've done is I've added the YouTube API code from a previous project on my very first YouTube subscriber counter project. I'll link that below. And then I had to do some hacking around so that I could take their original concept of getting text over Wi-Fi to be put on this display and merge it with data coming in from the YouTube counter. So this became a big mishmash. So once the sketch is uploaded and it's running, here's a quick demo. It will go in, use the YouTube API to get the subscriber count, start scrolling that as the default message on the display. And if I want to add some extra custom text, prior to the YouTube sub count, I can go to the web interface, type in what I want in the message box, submit, and now the final message on the display is going to be the custom text followed by the YouTube sub counter. This is basically the schematic I have. There's four of these panels on one PCB, so eight by eight LEDs times four, and on the far right, VCC and ground pins, and then SPI interface. There's serial clock, chip select, and serial data coming in. So here's the pins on Node MCU for the ESP8266 that I'm configured for. And I have this wired up to be powered from 5 volts. Even though ESP8266 is a 3.3 volt I.O. system, 
I'm not driving anything back, so I'm not going to damage the ESP8266. So the only concern is, when my output signals are only going between 0 and 3.3, can my 5 volt system read the highs and lows? It seems to work for me and many other people, just like this, without having to do a level translator to get it up to 5 volts. So to keep the schematic simple, I just made it go direct. Although you wouldn't want to do this in a real long-term project. Like if I were going to build this in an enclosure and have it inside a box mounted somewhere permanently running, I think I would want to do level translating just because two months from now I don't want some glitches to happen because for some reason the behavior has changed because this isn't really the reliable way to do it. But it works for testing. Some people also power this from 3.3 volts and I tried that as well and it did work. The LEDs all lit up even when I had the whole panel lit up they all lit up and the data was still coming through and the sign was working but on my particular panel these LEDs on the top over here toward the left they were a little bit dimmer than all the rest and possibly all the LEDs were dimmer than 5 volts. The thing worked though and it looked fine, it's usable, but because I could see it was dimmer I did power it from 5 and I'm so far getting away with data at 3.3. Proper setup, power this from 5 volts and do a level shift up to 5 volts on these three signals. And that's basically the schematic. So quickly looking at the data sheet for the 7219, we're not going to go through all the features and capabilities, but just to highlight, it is a 5 volt part, so we really shouldn't be running it from a 3.3 volt supply. On the bench, anything goes, but in a real project, we want to be giving this 5 volts. And to make sure all of our data inputs from the SPI port are going to be reliably detected, the minimum voltage it's expecting for a guaranteed high input to be recognized is 3.5. I'm running it with a best case 3.3 volts coming out of the ESP8266. It happens to work, but it isn't reliable for a proper design. So on the bench, that's why I'm okay just doing this. In a real circuit, you want to level shift from 3.3 up to 5 on those SPI inputs. And since I'm using this 5 volt V in pin on Node MCU to give me my 5 volt power, that goes to the USB 5 volts coming from the USB connector. So, best case, I should not be trying to draw more than 500 milliamps out of this 5 volts, or I could shut down the computer's USB port. I guess if I'm using a wall adapter with a USB output so I can get one or two amps from a charger kind of thing, maybe I'm okay. But I am limited to 500 milliamps and I am pushing that. I measured the current when I had all four panels fully lit and I was getting just over half an amp. But I also just let some text scroll and Maybe on average I was seeing between 100 and 200 milliamps to just have scrolling text. So just something to keep in mind with how to power this. So let's look at the sketch I came up with based on this eTech Path example sketch. I've tried to add as many useful comments as I can. As with any of our Wi-Fi projects, you need to configure your network name and password and for the YouTube stats, your API key and channel ID. And you can refer to the link below for my previous YouTube API video to see how to acquire these things if you don't already have. We have to configure how many 8x8 displays we have and I have four. Here's the SPI pins. The default sketch for this MD Max library is configured for this certain Parola display and it was actually mirrored and running backwards when I used it. But I added this comment here. I pulled this info out of the Max header file. There's four different modules to choose from. I went through all of them. So I have to use IC station hardware and you have to put this in your define. So the same thing, if you're going to run some of those examples from this library, you have to make sure you tell it how many panels you have, what hardware works for you, and what your SPI pins are. And then this line initializes the driver with all of that. And this is where things started getting a bit kludgy for me because I don't know fully how to use everything. This example code I'm working from is already set up 
to create a Wi-Fi server so that it can send web pages out for us to enter in text messages. But I also need a secure client to do the YouTube API. So I just kind of mishmashed everything together. There might be some stuff here that's redundant or wrong and it just happens to work. We have it set up to go once a minute and get the latest YouTube subscriber count. Current message is the main message. Web message is the string that comes in if I enter one on the web. Stats message is my predefined YouTube sub count message. Current message really equals web message plus stats message. Some more variables to keep track of things. We can control how fast or slow the text is scrolling. So for the web server in the ESP8266, that's going to display a web page when we go to the IP and we can enter in our text string, the web page is generated here in these two text character arrays. This web page array, for example, is built up with the same text that would shoot out on a website. So it's got the title of the web page that will show up in your browser, configuring colors and boxes. And down at the bottom, we create this form where we can enter in our text in a box and we have it set to accept 200 characters and a submit button that you can click. So when you submit text, the ESP8266 will go in and extract that out and start sending it on the display. Initialize the matrix display, start doing the usual Wi-Fi things and connect to the network. And then the very first thing I want to do is go in and get my first YouTube subscriber count data. So immediately I have some text I can scroll with my subscriber count. And I made this routine called update message which basically goes in and builds up the main text string based on the YouTube subscriber info plus any web server custom text. It'll combine those together. The main string called current message is a global variable. So elsewhere in the program, down in the depths where I don't understand it, the scrolling sign routines are constantly sending out whatever the current message is. So I just go here and update it on the fly and then whatever's the new current message is automatically going to be scrolled out. So check if 60 seconds have passed and if so go in and see if there's a different subscriber count and if we detect new subscriber count info we'll go and update the current message again so it's always got the latest subscriber count. Go in and check if there's any HTTP requests coming in on the web server because we're trying to load the web page or enter custom text, go and do what we need to do to scroll some text. Loop back around, see if there's new subscriber info, go see if there's anything happening on the web interface, go and keep scrolling out text. So the routine I made to update the message, I start a brand new temporary string variable. And now I got to put this string into a format that these character arrays can handle so I can send it out on the display. So I'm converting this string to an array called stats message. And then I build up my main current message, which is what's always getting sent out on the display. I start overwriting current message with any text I happen to have brought in from the web. So I'm doing a string copy from the web text into the main current message. And then I want to concatenate my YouTube stats message after this. So in the end, current message, which is what's always being sent out, is equal to anything I entered on the web plus whatever the YouTube sub count is. And this is to pull the YouTube API every 60 seconds. We run this, it'll go in and use the API, get whatever public info is available in this API. We're interested in the subscriber counter. So if the subscribe count has changed from the last time we checked, update the subscribe count in our tracking variable and then go and update the text we are sending out. So handle Wi-Fi is going to go out and do what it needs to do, whether it's to show the web page to any clients that are accessing the ESP web server or to get the input from the text entry on the web page and then process it, add it to the current message that's being scrolled out, etc. So when this is called from the main loop on every round, this is a state machine. So our first state is going to be idle, state idle. So now we go through, this executes, and it's basically an initialization. And then we change our state to wait for connection. 
So then we're done this. And when our state is waiting for a connection, we check if server available. When checking if server is available, it looks to see if there's data available for reading. So if there's nothing available to do, we are escaping from here. But if there is something to do, we proceed through this state and we change it to state read because there's something to read. So we end up in this state and as long as there's something available, go in and start reading characters. We do that, we get what there is to get and we start building up our web text message that we later can add to the current message that gets scrolled out. So that's where all of this happens where it gets the text from the web. Otherwise, you do the things to close down the connection because you're done. And this is where I really have trouble keeping up. This is the stuff about the matrix displays and scrolling the data. Maybe this was a bit of an advanced library to be using and trying to deeply understand. It's the library that does what I want it to do, so I hacked it here and there, like I used my update message routine and hacked into this current message and made it do what I want to do to send out the text I want. It's another state machine. I guess it goes through and does what it needs to do to step out the text on the display. That's really all I need to understand out of this for now to get it going. I just wanted to get something working. So that's how we can get a Wi-Fi scrolling text display and or a YouTube subscriber counter running on a matrix LED display driven by the Max 7219 chips. Eventually we can create custom fonts or characters and animations on the screen, expand it to larger matrix displays, not just a wide sign, but you can stack them vertically as well as horizontally and make a big grid of matrices. Lots of opportunity to expand this project into something way bigger as time goes on.